In the previous video, we discussed about the policies, goals, the two types of goals, specific and abstract, and decisions, the two types of decisions, programmed and non-programmed, right? And in this video, we will be discussing about some of the main characteristics of public policy making. Okay, the meaning and the nature of public policy will be more clearer if we understand these different characteristics of public policy. So, number one is that public policy making is a very complex process and uh, policy making actually involves many components which are interconnected by communication and feedback loops uh, and the way in which they interact is very different. So, some parts of the process are explicit and directly observable, but many others proceed through the hidden channels that the officials themselves are often only partly aware of. So, these hidden procedures are very difficult and are often impossible to observe. So, the guidelines are often formed by the series of single decisions that result in a policy without any one of the decision makers being aware about that process. Okay. And then, uh, second is that it is a dynamic process. Policy making is a process that is a continuing activity taking place within a structure for sustenance and it requires a continuing input of resources and motivation. So it's a dynamic process and this changes with time and the sequence of its sub processes and phases vary internally and with respect to each other as well. Okay, so it's a dynamic process. And then the policy making comprises of various components and the complexity of the public policy making is actually an important characteristic of policy making. Um, public policy formulation is, often involves a great variety of substructures and the identity of these substructures and the degree of their involvement in the policy making vary because of the different issues, circumstances and the societal values. And the policy structure makes a different contribution. Um, that is that... Um, Basically, it suggests that every substructure makes a different and sometimes a unique contribution to the public policy. So, what sort of contribution substructures make depend on, in the part on their formal and informal characteristics, which vary from society to society. And then there is decision making. That policy making is a species of decision making itself. We already discussed about it in the previous video. And this is so because it's, it lets us use the decision making models for dealing with the policy making. And the next characteristic is that um, this lays down major guidelines. Um, that is the public policy in majority of the cases lays down the general directives rather than detailed instructions and on the main lines of action to be followed after the main lines of the action have been decided on detailed sub policies that translate the general theory into more concrete terms are usually needed to execute it all right and then the next characteristic is that uh, it results in action. The decision making can result in action in changes in the decision making itself or both or neither. Yeah. So the policies of most socially significant decision making such as most public policy making are intended to result in action. And also the policy is directed at the policy making apparatus itself such as efficiency drives in the government are the are pretty much action oriented you can say yeah and then um, policies actually are directed at the future so policy making uh, is one of the most important characteristic since it includes and introduces the ever-present elements of uncertainty and doubtful prediction that establishes the basic tone of nearly all the policy making yeah and actually policy making tends to formulate policies in vague and elastic terms because the future is so uncertain. 
so it permits policy makers to adjust their policies according to emerging facts and enable them to guard against the unforeseen circumstances as well and uh, uh, it is mainly formulated by the governmental organs um the public policies is also directed in part at the private persons and non governmental structures as when it calls for a law prohibiting a certain type of behavior or appeals to the citizens to engage in a private saving yeah but public policy in majority of the cases is primarily directed at the governmental organs and only intermediately and secondarily are at the other factors okay and then the next characteristic is that uh, policy making aims at achieving what is in the public interest however it is very difficult and it might be um difficult to find out what the public interest is in the first place and the term actually never the less conveys the idea of the general orientation and it seems therefore to be important and significant yeah and there is a good evidence that the image of public interest influences the public policy making process and is at least uh, that is why as conceived by the various public policy making units a real phenomena and an important operational tool for the study of policy making and then use of the best possible means and this can be explained as in the abstract terminology public policy making aims at achieving the maximum net benefit yeah so the benefits and the costs take part in the form of realized values and impaired values and um, cannot in most of the cases be expressed in the commensurable units um i will not be able to get into um, a lot of details uh please try to understand that uh, uh, i need to be really to the point i cannot go into the details of explaining these technical terms here yeah uh, you can anyways google about it or mention it in the comment section i won't mind explaining it to you further if you need further explanation okay and uh, often the quantitative techniques can um uh not be used in this area of public policy making but neither the qualitative significance of the maximum net benefits as an aim and nor the necessity to think broadly about the alternative public policies in terms of uh, benefits and costs is reduced so you see and uh, then and the last one is that there is involvement of various bodies and agencies so uh, for example industrial workers or intellectuals voters bureaucrats legislatures political executive political parties judiciary uh, and many more are the various organs that participate in public policy making and they can influence the policy process to a great extent